Hi everyone. Here is a quick video about debugging conditionals. I am wearing a tuxedo, but unfortunately you cannot see me. Um, this is part of the continuing series on just common uh, kinds of error messages that we see uh, with different programming um, syntaxes and uh, a couple of quick ideas about things that can go wrong that aren't related uh, to errors in the console. So let us begin. I'm going to start out with uh, a simple program um, by our standards, which is we've got a circle in a position, it's in the center of our canvas, and we're using a conditional to choose what color to fill the circle with. Um, the condition is if the mouse uh, X position is less than the width divided by two, so if the mouse is on the left hand side of my canvas, I'm going to fill with red, as we can see here. And otherwise, if it's on the right hand side of the canvas, I'm going to fill with green. Um, and then of course I have to draw the ellipse to actually see that take place. So that looks like this, right? Mouse is on the left, the ellipse is red. Mouse is on the right, the ellipse is green. So this is the working program, obviously. There's nothing wrong with this. Uh, if I'm going to be doing some debugging, I need to open my developer tools uh, in the JavaScript console in particular. So I'll do that right now. Book. There it is. It's got its various warnings as per usual uh, about the audio context. We don't worry about warnings, um, generally speaking, so we'll just leave those there. Okay, so syntax errors, the kinds of uh, errors that we, uh, sorry, wrong screen, uh, the kinds of errors that we make where we just type something incorrect. Um, with an if statement, the most common thing that we get wrong is missing out on parentheses. Okay, um, so for instance, Maybe the most common thing you might do early on in your programming is just forget to put the parentheses around the conditional. They absolutely have to be there, right? Um, but you can see how you might make this mistake just because this still sort of reads like something reasonable. It still says if the mouse x is less than the width divided by two. Um, the parentheses have to be there so that JavaScript can read this properly. Uh, so if we do it this way, the error that we will get is here. Um, uncaught syntax error, so it's a syntax error means that it's an error to do with literally how JavaScript is able to read your program um, as a text, and it says unexpected identifier, um, and it's telling us it's on line 14, right? So this is line 14 here, so that's helpful. Unexpected identifier, uh, it doesn't tell us what the unexpected identifier is, you can see here, it just says it ran into something it didn't expect to see. Um, so that relies on us basically taking a look at the exact line that it's pointing to and remembering that we need um, parentheses here. Unexpected identifier, generally, that means we're looking for some kind of uh, like a typo or some kind of syntax issue. So we ultimately we need to see that that's something um, that's going on here. Um, the thing that it expects to see, the reason that it's having that error is that when it sees if, the word if, it's like, okay, well, they're doing an if statement, that's great. The very next thing it expects to see after an if is a parenthesis. So when we don't have that parenthesis there, it gets confused because the next thing it sees is not the thing it expects. Uh, and that's why it causes an error. Um, you get the exact same error if you just don't have the opening um, parenthesis, right? Same error, line 14, unexpected identifier. Because again, it saw the if, and then it's on mouse X and it expected that first it would see uh, a parenthesis. So we would fix that by looking at the line and um, noticing that we were missing parentheses there. We need to sort of, you still need to ultimately know what the syntax is uh, to be able to spot that error. So the crucial thing is remember your parentheses and ideally just don't omit them uh, in the first place. Um, at the very least, um, know that they're meant to be there. Uh, we can cause an error in the same way if we just forget to close our parenthesis. Um, so there's now the closing one is gone and we get unexpected token this time. So a slightly different error message, exactly the same kind of problem. Uh, it's giving us line number 14, but it's saying unexpected token, open curly bracket. So if we go to line 14 again, uh, it's saying it didn't expect to see this. And it didn't expect to see this because in an if statement, before you see the opening curly bracket that would um, tell you what this if statement is going to do, it's expecting to see that closing parenthesis of your condition. 
Um, so that's what's confusing it in that case. So in this case, it told you what it didn't expect to see. The curly bracket and the problem is just before that, which is that you didn't close your condition. Okay, so those are classic. And you can imagine doing this just as a typer, right? You're typing quickly or something and you just accidentally don't type that closing parenthesis. Now you know what the error uh, would be if you did that. The other piece of key syntax here um, that we're going to run into is the curly brackets, right? We use more and more curly brackets the deeper into programming we go because we use them to surround distinct blocks of code. So these curly brackets here, for instance, are being used to surround the block of code uh, that will execute if the mouse X position is less than the width over two if it's in the left side of the canvas. Uh, so again, we could accidentally omit the opening curly bracket. So let's go and see what that error is. This gets a little bit trickier. So here we have uncaught syntax error, unexpected token else. Uh, and it's saying that the error is on line 17, okay? So line 17 is here, that's where the else is. Um, but the error is actually up here on line 14 again, right? It's that we didn't open our curly bracket. Curly bracket uh, related errors are really one of the most uh, irritating and painful kinds of syntax errors that we can make. It's why it's so important to make sure that your, um, that, your, uh, that your curly brackets match and that they're in the right places. Okay, it's that curly brackets, you do not want to mess with them. You need to make sure that they're working. Um, we can even see just from the syntax highlighting here, we can see that this else is not purple. Um, so that would also tell us that something was wrong even while we were looking just at the code itself. The else should be purple. The fact that it's not suggests that there's something going on in here in this if statement that is not quite right. Um, to find this error, we need to know at the very least that when we see something, uh, an error message like this, where it's saying it didn't expect to see the else, um, we should be able to look at this line here and say, well, that's a perfectly good else. We haven't misspelt it or anything. It's else and then a curly bracket, which is how it's meant to be. The thing that we should think when we see this and we realize that this bit is correct is that the problem is probably earlier in the program. It's not going to be after this. Um, because JavaScript is reading from the top to the bottom. So there's going to be a problem earlier, and so we should kind of trace backwards, and we should at that point hopefully be looking at the first half of the if statement, um, and that's where the problem is. We don't have matching curly brackets here. Uh, and indeed, if you put your cursor next to this curly bracket here on line 16, you can see a little blue underline, uh, and you can see that its little blue underline is matching the opening curly bracket of the draw function on line 11. Uh, which is not what it is meant to be matching, right? It's meant to be matching a curly bracket after our if. So we would put our curly bracket back in. Again, uh, the key thing really is that it told us that the error was uh, on a line that it's not on, line 17. We should know that we should look um, before that line uh, in order to kind of look out for it. Um, if we forget the closing curly bracket here uh, at the end of the first if, uh, we get a similar kind of issue, uh, unexpected token else. Um, it's the same problem. It's still it's giving us the wrong line number technically because the error now is on line 16 with the missing curly bracket, uh, but the same basic idea. It didn't expect to see the word else because before it would see else, it should see uh, the closing curly bracket of our if statement, right? Um, curly bracket errors are just horrible. Uh, the key really is the real way to work with curly bracket errors is not to generate them in the first place. And that means being very cautious uh, about how you use your curly brackets. Always make sure that they match before you carry on with anything. And this is very, very true, especially if you are cutting and pasting or copying and pasting code around in your program. If you're going to take a block of code and it's in curly brackets, um, make sure that you know whether or not you are taking those curly brackets with you if you need to or not taking them with you if you don't need to. Make sure you don't introduce mismatched curly brackets in your program. Cannot stress that enough. Okay, so those are the key syntax errors with an if statement. It's all to do with really the parentheses, right? You could also get something wrong uh, or weird in the, the condition, um, but that's more just like a, a standard kinds of errors. You could use an incorrect symbol here or something, for example. We won't talk about that. So be careful with your parentheses. You need parentheses around the condition. Be careful uh, about your curly brackets. You have curly brackets around the block of code that executes for the if, and curly brackets around the block of code that executes for the else, and for else if, if you uh, have that as well. The other kind of problem uh, that's harder to work with in uh, with conditionals is 
Because we now have this kind of specific expression of an idea in the condition, we can express that idea incorrectly. And that will lead not to an error in our program, um, but it would lead to just behavior that is not what we expected. So a common thing that we might do uh, accidentally is we might um, do something like, sorry, this. If the mouse x is greater than or equal to zero, maybe we're thinking that this is a way of expressing, oh, well, the mouse is to the right because it's bigger than zero. Um, you know, it's not totally unreasonable. It's, that does mean that it's to the right. Uh, the thing is that that means that it's to the right of the far left-hand side of the screen. Uh, and the problem with that is now this is always true. The mouse x is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. It can't become negative uh, in the first place, uh, at least in the context that we're working right now. So what that means is if I go back to my program, wherever I move my mouse now on the screen, uh, the mouse x is always greater than or equal to zero. And so the, the circle just never changes color. The fact that it never changes color is actually helpful, right? That's what lets me know that there's something wrong because I know the desired uh, behavior of my program. I know that what I wanted it to do is that when my mouse is on the left side, the circle is, uh, is red uh, or the other way, I'm forgetting now which way it is. Uh, and when my mouse is on the other side, it's green uh, or vice versa, whatever way it was. So we can see the behavior of the program here and we know that there's something wrong. And in particular, we know that there's something wrong with the circle not changing color uh, therefore, we should immediately suspect this section of our program here, right? This is the if statement, the conditional that controls the color. Clearly something is wrong. And if it's not responding to us correctly, then we should immediately suspect that there's something wrong with the condition uh, inside our uh, if statement. So we should then scrutinize this, this condition here and we should realize, oh, if I'm saying mouse x is greater than or equal to zero, all I'm really saying is that the mouse is kind of on the, on the canvas, right? It's to the right, it's to the right of zero. Zero is the far left. And if the mouse X is always gonna be greater than that, this is not actually gonna do anything. Um, so then we could say, oh, what I probably want is greater than or equal to width over two, because then that specifies half of the canvas. And that will give me my, my behavior back, right? Green, red, green, red, green, red. So, we see the behavior is wrong, we know where the if statement is that controls or should control that behavior and we should be suspicious of the condition and make sure that we read it very carefully and know that it's expressing the correct thing uh, that we wanted. Um, we could have exactly the same situation uh, if, for, if our condition was always false, for example, if mouse x is less than zero, for instance. That's something that can't happen either. The mouse's x position is never going to be below zero. That means this condition here is always false. And so the else is always gonna happen. We're always going to see a green circle. So if we go back, now nothing I do with my mouse changes the circle from being green. And it's the same process, right? I know what the behavior I wanted was. So I suspect the if statement that's controlling the color and I suspect the condition is gonna be the problem that is kind of stuck being always true or being always false. Uh, so again, I need to examine it, realize that mouse x is less than zero is something that's always not true, always false, and that's why that else is constantly um, not working. So again, I'm actually wanting something like mouse x is less than width over two. Red, green, red, green. Um, that's helpful. Um, but one final thing I just want to note here is it's not always the case that your program's misbehaviors will be immediately visible um, like they are in this toy example here. Uh, for one thing, programs get very complicated and it can be a little difficult to tell what's going on uh, moment to moment. Um, or you may just be doing things in your if statements that aren't immediately visible or audible or something else in your program. Uh, and you might still need to kind of work out what's going on. So consider the idea that we're just using, we're using a variable now uh, that's tracking whether or not the mouse is on the left or right of the screen. Uh, we'll start it off as undefined because we don't know yet. And then we're gonna do our little um, if statement. I'll get it wrong again. So I'm gonna say if the mouse x is greater than zero, then mouse is left would be um, set to uh, false, because it's not to the left because it's greater than zero. This is in my uh, slightly incorrect imagination. Uh, and if 
The other case, then presumably, I, I, you know, I'm not thinking about this very carefully. Um, I'm imagining that I'm making a mistake. Then mouse, sorry, mouse is left. Mouse is left is true in the other case. So if mouse x is greater than zero, then clearly uh, it's not to the left. So I set mouse is left to false. Otherwise, I set it to true. Uh, and then I carry on with my program. Obviously, I need to do something uh, with mouse's left down here, uh, but I'm not going to. This is just an example. But we can't see the problem here. Um, so if this was then causing a problem somewhere later on in our program, uh, we can't actually see what's going on there. So if we are suspicious about this, what we need to do then is, and what we often end up doing, is we put console.logs into our if statement. So for instance, here I would write console.log. Uh, mouse is to the right and click semicolon there because I'm a good person and the else I also put one in mouse is to the to the left and this basically makes the, the if statement visible again right it's just visible in my console.log so if the first part of the if if the actual regular if statement is going to work out to be true then I'll see this message and otherwise I'm going to see this message uh, and that enables me to look at my program while it's running. For example, I see my white circle. Uh, that's white because I'm not setting the fill anymore. Um, and <laughs> that's interesting. It's greater than zero. Wow, that's surprising to me. So I guess my mouse is, uh, oh, it's because I've set greater than zero. So I should set greater than or equal to zero because when it, when it equals zero, then obviously uh, I'm getting, getting the other side of the if statement. Sorry about the confusion there. Let's take that from, uh, from here. So if the mouse x is greater than or equal to zero, it's to the right of the canvas, which is true. Um, and otherwise it's to the left. So I've got those messages in there and that means that I'm always just gonna see this mouse is to the right message, right? There's nothing visible uh, on the canvas that I can use to debug here. I can't see any weird behavior, but because I can watch the message and I can move my mouse around uh, all the way to the left, all the way to the right, um, I can see that I'm never seeing the message mouse is to the left. Uh, and that again allows me to realize that there's some kind of behavior going wrong uh, inside my if statement, and again, as the, the usual, uh, the, the uh, very frequent cases that we want to scrutinize the um, the condition and realize that it's meant to be greater than width over two. And when I do that, now I see the two messages coming up uh, as I might expect, um, and so then I can continue on with my with my program, knowing that I got that correct. Okay, that's uh, that's it for debugging uh, conditionals. The key is like know your syntax errors. Um, know when the line number is kind of helpful to you because it's literally pointing to where your problem is, as is the case with, for example, a missing parenthesis in an if statement. Uh, or know that sometimes it's going to point to a line uh, like we saw with no curly bracket. It's going to point to a line that's actually correct, like the else, and that you need to look uh, kind of upstream, I guess, like before that particular line to find where the actual mistake is. Um, Syntax errors, clearly they require you to actually know the correct syntax. The error will direct you to the right kind, roughly the right kind of place in your program. There are some exceptions to this which are horrible that are to do with curly brackets. Um, but generally speaking, it'll put you in the right area and then you need to study the syntax uh, to kind of figure out what's going on. Uh, maybe the biggest lesson of all uh, and the thing that I hope you take away from this is please be careful with curly brackets. Um, just please make sure that they match all the time and you will save yourself uh, many, many hours uh, of debugging problems. Okay, that's it for me and my tuxedo. Um, that was debugging conditionals. See you in the next video.